interviewer. I'm here this morning with Kathy Bookfar, an old friend who's running for Congress here in Bucks County in the 8th Congressional District. Uh, how are you today, Kathy? I'm doing great, John. Thank you. Uh, an interesting event. A little, uh, a, a few Republicans came over to disrupt it. What did you think of that? Well, I think that is America, and it, it's still, despite it uh, interfering with some of the speakers, I have to say, look, we live in a country, a wonderful country, where it's perfectly legal, freedom of speech is great, and as I think it was Governor Rendell was yes. saying, the more we could be having exchanges of ideas, I prefer amicable exchanges of ideas, open exchanges of ideas, they should be doing that more in Congress, and that's part of why I'm running. <laughs> Well, you know, basically you have two competing groups here. We have the Democrats over here at the produce stand, the Republicans over there at the Wawa, a large crowd gathering there for Governor Romney. Uh, if you could ask Governor Romney one question this morning directly to him, what would it be? That's a very good question. Um, hmm, one question. I guess I would ask him to explain um, how Massachusetts dropped to, what was it, 47? 47. 50th under his watch. I mean, and how yet he still goes out there and promotes himself as a job leader. Um, that he was in the best position, really, to move things forward, and instead things rolled backwards under his watch. Why? Like, you know, I said when I spoke, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. This is not a good sign for Mitt Romney. So, why did you make the decision to run against uh, Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick? Well, you know, a lot of things went into it. Um, but I would say, you know, part, part substance and part process. So, to start with, look, I think we all know that Congress is absolutely broken right now. And what, what, when we started out talking just a little bit ago, one of the things I was saying is I really, the open exchange of ideas is what is the best um, tool for moving us forward. And that's completely missing from Congress right now. So, you know, it used to be that the Democrats and the Republicans, they would disagree, but they'd go out for a beer, they'd go out to grab a bite, and they'd hash it out, and they'd ultimately figure out how to get something done. That's completely lost from Congress. And I spent my career working with people with different opinions and different ideas, ultimately to move forward and reach solutions to move us forward and get things done. It's unacceptable that that's not happening, and I want to go to Washington to change that. Of course, that's what lawyers do, isn't it? It is, and I'm also a mediator. So, literally, that's what I've done, is facilitate compromise, facilitate solutions. Again, between people who went into the situation not expecting to agree. That's what I'm used to. Uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, the first time he was in Washington, was a lot more moderate than he's been this term. Um, he's embraced the kitchen table patriot tea party people here in Bucks County. How much do you think he's kowtowing to that extreme part of the Republican Party? Well, you know, what I care about even more than kowtowing is how he's voting. Let's look at it. Let's look at how he's actually voting. He is voting the Tea Party agenda across the board. And that's what that's what impacts all of us, right? I don't, I don't care what he's doing on Saturday night. What I care about is what he's doing when he's down in Washington. He's supposed to represent the 8th District, what's best for the 8th District of Pennsylvania. Instead, what he's doing is he's going to Washington and representing special interests. He voted twice to end Medicare as we know it, so that he could instead protect big oil and tax breaks for billionaires. He's voted to make it harder for us to send our kids to college, so that he can make it easier for, you know, special interests to, you know, do whatever it is that they do, you know, by shipping their jobs overseas. And that's not representing us. I want to bring the focus back to the people. He's been all about the special interests. But he was actually caught at a, a private country club thing in, in Florida, I think it was down in the Keys, with the, spe you know, partying with the special interests. Uh, what did you think when that video arose? Oh, I mean, it's really, it's such a, such a uh, great, ex great in a negative way example of how Mike Fitzpatrick says one thing and then does another. So he wants to say that he's, you know, fighting for us and that he's, you know, all about, you know, representing the people. But, but then he goes and he hobnobs with the Wall Street financiers that he's supposed to be regulating as a member of the Financial Services Committee. He shouldn't be at a luxury golf resort accepting financial contributions from the people that he's supposed to be regulating. But that's, he said,
says one thing, he does another. Well, and then recently he was caught doing uh, earmarks for a local company that's contributed to his campaign. What's your opinion of that? Same thing. And, you know, again, we want to know that when we elect somebody as a representative, they are a representative for all of us, not just the people that can pay. And I was very proud that in the first quarter, we had, we, we outraised Mike Fitzpatrick in contributions from individual citizens. Guess where he outraised us? With special interests. Exactly. PAC money. So he, that's where, that's where his motivation is. And it's clear time and time again. Story in our local paper, um, where he had the nerve to say, "Do you want to be represented by San Francisco or somebody from Bucks County?" And I say to that, "You, Mr. Key Largo, Mr. Big Oil, want to talk to me about not? I've raised my family here. I've owned a business here. I've spent most of my adult life working for the people of the Eighth District. I want to go to Washington to continue to move things forward for the people of the Eighth District, not for the special interests like Mike Pence." Well, in, in fact, you are not Nancy Pelosi, is that correct? I mean, I, you know, the last time I checked, <laughs> and in fact, you know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It, it's such a generic attack, if that's the best they could do. It's amazing that a strong woman uh, who's been in power as Nancy Pelosi still uh, incites such fear in the minds of, you know, people like Mike Fitzpatrick. Have you thought about maybe bringing former Speaker Pelosi here to to show people of the 8th District who she really is? We haven't at this time. <laughs> what will you do for the residents, the constituents of the 8th District that Congressman Fat Fitzpatrick is not? <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, I think first thing we need to be doing is really focusing on the jobs and the jobs in the economy. I mean, I think most of us agree, but what's the Republican Congress doing? Instead, they're focusing on things like rolling us backwards, you know, hitting women, hitting seniors. I want to move us forward. So jobs in the economy, I want to be, you know, some of the speakers talked about it today. I feel very strongly that we are not making smart investments that are ultimately going to pay off later. So I want to make sure that we're, sometimes people want to ask you, are you a pro-business or are you a pro-worker? I reject that question because the fact is you need to be pro-business in order to be pro-worker. You need to give the businesses the ability to build the jobs, to bring their jobs back from overseas here, to grow their businesses, create the jobs that give us the workers livable wages so that we can support our families, send our kids to college, and give our kids a better world than we had, you know, and continue that, that forward moving. So first and foremost, I would do that. But then, you know, I talk sometimes about, people ask about women's rights. You know, if we're going to be talking about women's rights, instead of revisiting issues that were decided generations ago, I want to be talking about pay equity. I want to be talking about childcare opportunities. I want to be talking about rising women out of the cycles of abuse and poverty. I mean, there's so many problems that we have right now. Why don't we actually focus on the things that matter rather than focus on, on undoing things that were, you know, figured out long ago? Of course, yeah, there's, dur during the election season, there's been a lot of controversy over contraception. Um, you know, it's something that was settled generations ago, but all of a sudden it's a major campaign issue this year. It's very interesting. I mean, you know, but you've seen the polling, I'm sure. What is it, 98%, 99% of women, you know, have used contraception, support using contraception, and want, frankly, a lot of this is about equity, right? So you want the same treatment, whether it's insurance companies or what have you, you want insurance companies to cover things that involve women the same way they cover things that involve men. I mean, that's, it's common sense, you know? So sometimes people want to paint this about contraception or about, you know, this or that. I actually think it's a broader picture issue. I think we want to make sure that there's equity across the board and equality. Um, about how, for example, the insurance companies treat things. We, women shouldn't be charged more for health coverage than men. You know, there shouldn't be pre-existing conditions for, you know, specific issues that relate to women that don't have equivalent things. There shouldn't be pre-existing condition exclusions at all, let me be clear. Right. <laughs> um, this week, out in Michigan, two female lawmakers were banned from speaking on the floor for two days because they said the word Vagina. Seriously, how did I miss the story? <laughs> so 
Yes, and, and uh, a debate over uh, abortion restrictions. Uh, one uh, lawmaker uh, told her male colleagues to stay out of her vagina. And they uh, banned her from speaking on the floor for two days as a result of that. <laughs> Would you be willing in a similar fight in Washington to say the word vagina? <laughs> I, am, I am willing to say the word vagina. <laughs> <laughs> What's your guttural reaction to that story? Well, look, I'm a lawyer. I like to read, um, I like to read things yeah. before I answer okay. questions about like the the actual details yeah. so I don't know what the floor rules are there yeah. and is it that she said vagina or is it that she said get out of my vagina and was it perceived as somehow so I do yeah. think that the details right. matter but um, I would think that the word vagina itself should not be a reason for uh, ex right. you know, ejecting somebody from the house all right um, message of voters why should they support Kathy Bookvar this year one short sentence one short sentence. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Vote for the people. I want to. I want to be your representative because I want to put the public service back in back in public service, and that's sorely missing. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, John.